Take it away, Philip. Hello and welcome to Michael's virtual online class. I am Philip Adango, your instructor today, and thank you so much for joining us in learning about crafting for cosplay. This series has been brought to you by Michaels, and it's also brought to you by Fiskars, Scissors, and Cutting Tools. And I am presenting to you live today from Slover Creative Studios in Norfolk, Virginia, where as you can see, there's a lot of tools and knowledge and information being shared um, that helps our communities here in Norfolk, Virginia. Now, today's class is the third part of my war crafting series that you can find on Michael's YouTube. And today we are focusing on crafting elf ears for cosplay. Now, there are many types of ears that you may be able to see for your costume or your cosplay. The first most common form that you'll find um, is the, um, the, the ear tips, which just apply to the edge of your ears. But there's also prosthetics that you'll usually apply with some sort of adhesive. Now, the purpose of this class is to demonstrate how you can create the headband version of elf ears. Now, this class is being recorded and you can find it at tomorrow's um, posting on Michael's YouTube. So this version of elf ears can be created with either EVA foam or Warbler thermoplastic. Now, the headband version of elf ears goes underneath a wig. So as you can see in this Navi style um, ear, from Avatar series, not the anime, but the movie. Um, you can see that this um, setup has a wig and underneath the wig is a headband with elf ears. And I created this using very easy to use materials that we'll be going over today. And in the chat, there will be a course pack, a PDF that I created that you can follow along and it'll have all the instructions that we are going over today, as well as suggestions and creative ideas for other different types of fantasy ears that you wanna create. Now this version, as I said, is the type that wears as a headband. So whether you're going to be a blood elf, a hobbit, or maybe even um, what we're calling now Baby Yoda or Grogu or a troll or Shrek or any sort of um, amazing fantasy character. This is an easy to make headband style elf ears that we'll be making today. Now to achieve this, we'll be using several tools and the cutting tools that we'll be using include the Fiskars power cut shears. We can look at the overhead. We'll be using the rotary cutter as well. And we will be using a knife. This project will also include utilizing inexpensive plastic headbands that you can get from your local beauty store. And we'll be using EVA foam. This is four millimeter and two millimeter EVA foam. Now this project can also be accomplished by using Warbla Finest Art Thermoplastic, which is available at Michael's. Uh, and if you look in the course pack, I tell you a little bit about the pros and cons between using both or either. Now it's wonderful to use EPA foam because it's, it's much more inexpensive and it's lighter, um, but it's also not as durable as Warbla Thermoplastic. Now uh, Warbla can be very sharp and it can also get heavy very quickly. So today's focus is creating this headband style ears. So we're going to start with our plastic headbands. I'm gonna use this brown one so you can see the contrast. All right, so now that we have these basic headband, 
when you put it on the camera on me, you can see that it is not, it's not large. <laughs> and these are the ones that come from the dollar store. So you see this comes down to the top of the ear. So we will be using craft sticks to extend the length of our headbands. So what you wanna do is take some tape. I'm using blue painter's tape, it's just so that you can see how it looks like. And what I'm doing is essentially extending the length of the headbands. So I wanna aim to extend that. And you can use um, a tape that's strong like gaff tape or masking tape. This is a blue painter's tape just so you can see how I'm applying it. It's better to use uh, a tape that's a dark brown or something that's easily paintable. So that's one side. And then I am adding another side. And during this class, if you have questions, please type it into the chat and one of the moderators will stop me during the class and, and ask a question and I will answer it to the best of my ability. We do have one question, Philip. They're asking um, if you already have a headband that fits you. I'm assuming it's okay to use that, but I'll let you answer that. If you already have, can you say that one more time? If they have a headband that already fits you, can they use something from around the house? Is, I'm, I'm Absolutely. Nice. If you have a headband that already fits you, or you might have some cat ear headbands that you no longer want to use, you can strip those just as long as it fits the top of your head. And what this does is that it actually extends the length of the headband. And if you put the camera on me, what we want to do now is make sure that it's centered on the top of your head and it reaches the sides of your ears. And you want to just use a marking tool to indicate where the your earlobe ends. So when you mark that on your craft stick here, you wanna make sure that it's the same on the other side. You can measure it or you can eyeball it, but you wanna make sure that the area is indicated where it meets the lower part of your ear. And that's important because you want to cover as much of your ear as possible. Uh, but also later on, um, we're gonna add just a little bit of support to the bottom to make sure that it's secure on your head. Great. So at this point, you've got a headband with some craft sticks on here. Don't cut this yet. We're gonna do that much later. So from here, now we've got our base ready. And we're gonna create some ears. If you follow along in the course pack PDF, you'll be able to see um, the processes in, um, in detail. So what I'm going to make are some basic ears and I am going to make them approximately seven inches by two inches. So what I'm going to do is just use my pencil to um, indicate how long I want my ears to be. So a tip here is to add an inch. So we're now at eight. And we're just gonna make an annotation as to where that is. You're gonna, you're gonna want to have an inch of buffer space because that will be the area that's attached to those wooden extensions we just created on the headband. All right, so that is eight inches here. And now I'm going to do two inches here. So what I'm going to do is just create that demarcation of where that extra inch is, that's the buffer space. And now this is where you can be creative on how you wanna design your ear, whether you want to make a hobbit ear, a short ear, a long ear, 
you can be as creative as you want. Now, I'm just gonna create some basic shapes so that you can understand the process. Now, in the more intermediate level of this, you'll be creating a fold, upper fold, um, within this design itself. What I'm gonna show you is um, a pretty more straightforward um, version which utilizes two different types of foam. So this is a four millimeter EVA foam. Again, you can do this with warble thermoplastic as well. So I am just going to create air like that. And so you're gonna want two of these. So what I'm gonna do is utilize my rotary cutter from Fiskars and easily just cut out one of my ears. So just keeping in mind that I do have an inch extra here, no space here. And then from this, you can easily trace another copy of your ear onto the EVA foam as well. And then just as quickly, keeping in mind, safety is always number one. So now you have two master ears to work off of. So right now this is eight inches, but uh, one inch of that will be buffer space. Okay, so from here, and you'll see why I say this is the beginner, because I'm gonna show you how we're gonna create folds for the ears. So as you can see that I have a pretty flat surface here. That can be any shape, but for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to easily make some upper ear folds. So what you wanna do is take the area that is pretty much straight horizontally, and then just do a fold over, just like that. Now, an important piece in, you know, in your cosplay is being able to function while you're wearing it. And what I like to do is create ear holes for hearing. So I am going to just mark out where I'm gonna create an ear hole like that. And it's okay if your, um, your hold overlaps with the ear hole as long as you have some space to hear. All right, so I like this as my ear type or ear fold. And you can get very creative with your ear folds at this point. You can add um, inner folds here by using strips. You can create a lower fold if you'd like. You can get very creative with your ear folds. All right, so I like how this is looking. So I'm just going to mark off where that ends. And I like to give at least a quarter to a half inch buffer room as I create and trace out this fold. Now, you could have done this uh, a different way as well. You could have created an entire pattern just like this. This is the more inter intermediate step. You could have created an entire piece like so using just a four millimeter and then fold it over. Or if you're more comfortable in a step-by-step -step process, it's much easier to just you know, do something where you can fold it over and you can glue it. And that's what we're gonna do in this demonstration. So I know that that's kind of the fold I want and we're gonna be doing some adjustment as we go along. But what's great is that once you make one, you can easily craft the other. All right, so there's one. It's easiest when you find a straight edge and then you trace from there.
Now, if you are using a pencil and you're marking all over your ear, don't worry about it. You can prime your foam later and then paint it. Okay, so now you have what will be your folds for your ears. And you can trim and adjust however the back length needs to be. I'm gonna show you how I use the Fiskars cutting tool and just cut out an ear hole. Again, be very careful when using cutting tools. As you can see, there's two different mats on the table. One is a cutting mat and one is a silicone heat map. So this is what I use when I'm working with um, hot devices, heating devices, such as glue guns. So I am easily going to duplicate that ear hole. Like so. And just cut that out. Your holes don't have to all be the same shape or size. It can be creative, it can be longer, it can be shorter, just as long as you have enough area to hear through. Okay, great. So let's see how this kind of looks like so far. So you got one ear. Now you've got the other ear. All right, so this is the start. And I'm noticing that I have way too much material going on in the back. So what I can do is just easily just trim that. It's always easier to remove than it is to add material. And just carefully cut off any excess material that you don't need. Voila. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Great, I'm actually cut a little bit more. The back side is not as important as the front side. Usually it's close to your head and you can't see it, but everyone has different preferences on how perfect they want their ears to be. All right, so you can do some trimming and adjusting later to make it more perfect. All right, I'm gonna get rid of all the scraps that I'm not using, put aside my tools so that I have a clean work area. Okay, so now we wanna make sure that we know which side is which. So this side will be the left side. And this side will be the right side. Now keep in mind, what you're looking at is the mirror part. So you gotta make sure that the left side is actually paired up with the left side and that to the right side. Okay, so from here, you can use your preferred adhesive device, uh, whether it's a hot glue gun or epoxy or uh, contact cement. And what you wanna do is leave about a quarter of an inch for contact space in the back that will attach to your wood extension. And from here, you can really figure out how you want your ear fold to end up like. An easy way 
is to use binder clips like this, just to temporarily hold as you figure out how you want your ear folds to look like. So it looks like I want mine to end just about there. So I'm gonna use my Fiskars power cut shears and just trim off the excess here. All right. From here, I am going to utilize my glue gun. And I'm starting from the inner ear, just gluing that down. Again, be very careful when working with any hot devices because, well, they're hot. Now from here, you can see how it naturally kind of folds like that. And this is up to you on how you want to glue the back in order to achieve your folds. Now, this is a little bit more difficult when you're working with warble thermoplastic because you need to use a heat gun in order to shape this or else it'll just be very flat. And as you know, warble thermoplastic, if you watched my second video, like Warcrafting with Warbler, this tends to be very tough to work with until you heat it up with a heating element such as a heat gun. All right, so that is set over there. And what I'm going to do is, because I like the way that this folds like this, I'm simply going to use my hot glue gun, apply a thin line in the back, let that set, make sure I achieve the fold that I want. You can also heat your EVA foam with a heat gun to make it more pliable. Because I'm only using four millimeter and underneath a two millimeter fold, I really don't need to use it that much, but it's also very helpful for sealing your foam closed cell so that you can prime and paint over it. You can learn more about that in my first video, Warcrafting an Ice Sword using EVA foam. All right, so now I've got this ear ready and I know it pairs with the right. I'm simply going to make a mark R for the right side so that I know that it goes to the right side. All right, let's repeat on the other side. If you have any questions, please post it in the chat and one of the moderators will ask. We do have one okay, question, don't... Philip. Yes, absolutely. What happens if you use just one layer instead of two pieces? If you just use one layer of foam? I believe so. Yes, so if you're just gonna use one layer of foam, this is basically your pattern right here. You basically don't need this part underneath. Uh, because I'm creating an ear and usually the fold, upper fold is thinner and more pliable and, and easier to work with, I tend to use two pieces. However, this here can be your pattern. Right here, that's your pattern that you cut out of foam or warbler, and then simply just fold it over like so. You just have to measure out in advance how you want that fold to look like. It's a you don't have as much control when you're doing a flat pattern just like this as if it was a one piece. So you need to do your pre measurements beforehand and account for the upper fold or an additional folds. However, if you do it this way with two pieces, you can have a better idea visually if you're like me who kind of like waits until the last minute to make adjustments, you can do some manual adjusting while you have the glue setting or as you are, as you are using your adhesives. All right, so I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch at the bottom. And you can follow along again in the PDF. I'll let that one sit. There's also a waiting game whenever you're using um, adhesives. If you're using contact cement, please use that in an open area and wear protective um, devices because it can be toxic. 
You can also use cyanoacrylate, which is also known as super glue. It's easier to use those materials after you um, hit it with a heat gun because it closes the cell of the foam. Okay, so similar to how I did the other one, I want my fold and like that. So you can always tweak it later. Every ear is unique. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add some hot glue here. Foam is much easier to work with when you have a lot of room for error. When working with warbler or any thermoplastic and crafting ears, warbler tends to stick to itself and it's hard to separate. Um, and so you don't have a lot of time in between as the warbler cools to make adjustments but with EVA foam. You do have a little bit of a wiggle room as blue cools and sets your ears. Add a little more to the back. We'll call that a day. You can also use binder clips to hold items while they're gluing down. Fun little tip when working with adhesives, or you can put something on top to just let it set. Great, so this is going to be our left side. I'm just gonna indicate that here for learning purposes. So now we've got the right, we got our left. And now we've got to figure out how it sits on the headband itself. This is again where binder clips work very, very well. So as, if you remember, we added a one quarter inch seam allowance um, to our ear here. And what that does, it's, it's approximately the same size as the wood craft stick extension we made. Now, keep in mind that, that this particular demo is with EVA foam. EVA foam is a little bit harder to manipulate when it, when it uh, comes to setting it in the angle that you want it to stay in. So here, you don't really have a lot of access to keeping it where it is unless you put something behind it to prop it up. So whether it's you know additional tape or another structure in the back, so that it sticks out like this or that. This tends to just kind of stick out almost 90 degrees um, to the headband itself, which you know is a good thing if you're looking for that high elf, you know, type of look, that Warcraft ear type of look. It just kind of sticks up, but you can also use this time to adjust the angle of your ear as well. So if you want it to be a higher um, pointier here like this, or if you want it to be more of like a fawn, it can be like this. So we already have like a Navi style ear from the movie Avatar. So why don't we make fawn type ears? And what you can do is, again, you can find some other fantasy ears examples in the PDF. So I'm gonna put this here and approximately, so if you're making Mr. Tumnus from Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe, if you're a fan of Narnia, huge fan. All right, let's go ahead and switch it over to the front facing camera. So far, here are my ears. I am Mr. Cumnus. Welcome to the Wood Between Worlds. So if you're looking for fawn ears, you can do it this way as well. Kind of cute. Thank you. So it's great when you've got um, clips, binder clips to help you adjust the height and length and axis, the um, Y axis of your, your headband. So if you're happy with where it sits, 
this is where you can start to glue. I like to glue the, uh, if you switch back, yep, thank you. I like to glue beneath or above. It really doesn't matter. It depends on how you want to hide the, um, the foam later, whether you're covering it up with your hair. So either way, doesn't matter. Like the foam will actually add um, additional cushion against your skin if you do it this way. So what I'm gonna do is just make a quick mark with my pencil as to where I like that. Okay. All right, so let's just hit it with the heat gun. I mean, with the glue gun. I'm gonna set this right where I had indicated that line is. It can be a little bit of a waiting game. All right, and I am gonna use my binder clip to just set that and while I'll work on the other side. Binder clips are amazing. I love them. I actually like using them for fabric as well. If you are a sewist and you like making clothes, they do make mini clips that you know are sold that way. It's the same purpose. You can use clothes pins or binder clips. I like to use binder clips when working with vinyl or heavy fabrics like upholstery because sometimes they're hard like you don't want to puncture vinyl fabrics or anything like that with um, pins. So binder clips are a really great resource. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now, while this is gluing, I'm gonna talk a little bit about sealing your foam. If you watch my video um, with Warcrafting on Eyesore, talk a little bit about foam sealing. You can heat it with a heat gun to close all the cells. And then you can use materials like Mod Podge or Plasti Dip to completely seal the surface of your foam. There's also Bondo or even just white Elmer's glue um, will do. Uh, a fine job of sealing as well before you prime and paint it. Okay, so we'll just let that sit here for just a second while it starts to cool down. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about Borbla. So, we can do the exact same process that we did here using Warbla thermoplastic. Now, what's great about doing this with Warbla is that you can actually adjust the angle, the outer angle of your ear because all you have to do is just keep the Warbla and then adjust it and it will set as it cools. EVA foam, as I said, you're gonna need something else to put behind it to prop it up. So if you want to, you can also use Warbla to Put a little bit, little strip in the back, and then fold it, and it becomes an additional uh, endoskeleton support on the back of your ear. I know that sounds a little bit complicated, but actually it's very straightforward. So if we were to take just a small piece, and I'm gonna cut this. I didn't bring my heat gun, so I can't show that process with you, but you hit this with a heat gun and then it becomes soft and pliable. You'll be able to fold it and then simply attach it to the back and then create some uh, leverage behind it to fold it up and then let it um, uh, cool down and stay in structure. So you'll have much like a, if you want your ears to jut out a little bit more. So that's one way of creating some backing to it. And you know you, you don't need a lot. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. Okay, so it looks like our ears are now glued. Okay, so this is where you know, you, you're happy about it. 
And what I recommend when you're going to trim, but you see where we indicated earlier where the bottom of your ear is. When this goes underneath your hair, you won't be able to see all of this. If you take a piece of that hair or some filament or just cut off a piece of that wig and glue it right down the side here. And I like to make sure that I reach the bottom of my ear. So what I do is I take my power cut shears and leave about a quarter inch room beneath the ear. Simply cut that, just like that. And then put a piece of the hair, won't cut the wig right now, but if you have some excess hair or some just cheaper hair that you can get from the store, like a beauty supply store, a tip is to use that same color and then just simply glue a piece of that right onto that wooden area right here. That said, you can also go ahead and trim away any of the excess area here. I like to leave just a little bit of space so that it's a little bit more surface area so you can glue the hairs there. All right, and again, about a quarter inch from the bottom of my ear. It goes just like that. All right. And if you can switch back to the front view. All right, I got my Mr. Compass ears right here. All right. Again, if you add some hair to the side of your ears, it'll allow you to disguise that kind of structure that you created. So let's throw on a wig and see what happens. All right, so I've got my wig right here. I've got my ears on. You can secure your headband onto your head using bobby pins. So I think I have some already in this wig here. Now, if you're gonna do uh, a wig cap, you can easily use your wig cap as the secure base for it. Or you can do a braid down your hair or do like kind of like a Heidi braid across your forehead to create some secure structure there. But right now, so I just got a haircut, so I don't have that much hair to work with, but it's easy to simply use part of your hair and create like a hold for it. So for now, just sitting on my, yep, sitting on my head. Okay, so you take your wig. Best way to apply your wig is from the front to the back. So you align the front of your wig to your forehead. And be very careful pulling it back. Some people like to flip their hair back immediately. I like to just kind of let it roll it over to the back. All right, so right now it kind of looks like a hot mess because you're just put on a whole bunch of hair on your head. But what you want to do is simply take part of your hair and start to lay it in front of your face, covering the area where the hair meets the ear. Again, if you pre-cover your ear using parts of your wig or just another filament, same color as your hair. You could easily, oh, where's my other ear? There you are. You could easily create that illusion. So right now you can kind of see where this, um, where this area is, but if you paint, that area, same color as your hair. You won't be able to see it. All right. Let me just pick this up a little bit. Got a little rock star fawn 
action going on right now. Okay, so here is the right side of Fawn, Rockstar Fawn. Here's the left side, my left side. Easy ears that you can easily make with some inexpensive materials. And then from here, you can paint your ears whatever color you want it to be. You can make more ears using the same material. Philip, do you have any suggestions on type of paint to use on foam? Can you repeat that one more time? Um, do you have suggestions on type of paint to use on the foam? Yes, absolutely. So, the, first of all, you would want to make sure that your foam is sealed. Best way to do that is take a heat gun and then just do a quick pass over it. And you can also see, kind of see the surface of the foam kind of like close up. And that's what you want. You want it to be kind of a smooth surface. And then you can use a primer like a white glue or a Mod Podge or Plasti Dip um, to coat the surface. Uh, it's almost like a rubber a coating or a sealant that protects the foam. It keeps the foam from sucking in the paint, which is what happens sometimes. And then what you do is from there is to let that all dry. And then you can use um, acrylics like Plat Effects uh, acrylic paints. Uh, you can use spray paint. Um, you can use um, certain oil paints, but you wanna make sure that um, after you do your painting, you want to seal it as well. That would be the same um, kind of a process that you would do with um, using warbler as well, thermoplastic. Um, warbler thermoplastic does have kind of a grittier texture. Uh, some people like to seal it and then sand it so that it's a completely smooth surface. It gets a little bit more tricky when you're working with smaller surface areas. Um, however, process is the same. You can use plastic dip, you can use Mod Podge, uh, Flex Bond. Um, you can use a, a different products from Smooth On as well. Um, but the, the idea is that you are sealing it, painting it, and then sealing it again. And um, all kinds of materials are available at Michael's. All right, are there any, uh, any additional questions? We can find this tutorial and a demonstration on Michael's YouTube uh, tomorrow. Um, in addition to my other war crafting classes uh, available on the Michael's YouTube, you'll find war crafting an ice sword um, and war crafting um, uh, with warbla. And this is war crafting um, elf ears and Warcraft. I love Warcraft, one of my favorite characters, Gul'dan. And you can find more information about me as a cosplayer and what I do on my website at canvascosplay.com. You can find me on Instagram at Philip Odongo. And you can also find me on Facebook when you look for um, Canvas Cosplay on Facebook as well. You can find more information about the Slover Creative Studios uh, by going to their website address in the chat. Um, and they posted a link uh, to that in the chat. And more information about Fiskars cutting tools on Fiskars.com. And of course, uh, Michael's, we can find a lot of great materials um, and you can make it with Michael's you know, very easily. And um, be sure to use your uh, coupon. Uh, right now, I think the 20% coupon off of regular price items. And I know for sure that the uh, Warbler is currently uh, on sale. So be sure to use that um, to your advantage as you are crafting. Um, and I know that there's talks of comic cons and conventions opening this you know, summer and beyond, but always please practice um, your COVID guidelines and uh, hopefully we'll be able to gather again and create some awesome work together. And right now, while we're still uh, quarantined in many places, this is a great time to learn and to take advantage of all of the classes that are available on michaels.com and also take a look at some of the um, crafts that are made uh, using Fiskars tools on Fiskars.com. Again, my name is Philip Odongo. Thank you so much for joining me today on Warcrafting Elf Ears and hope to see you next time in a future class. Thank you.